What's good, heavily delusional people? What's up? Now, straight up, next week, I'm going to convention, so I may not be here to review Heavily Delusion. Friday, Saturday, Sunday is going to be rough. However, we're here this week, and since they only got a small snippet after the credit scene, I'll just talk about the outside right quick. Y'all niggas took two weeks off just to be like, what the fuck? Mimi Hime, or Mimi Hime, had a dream that she was in a dark place, and somebody came and got her out of it. And it made her happy. She claimed to forgot already. And well, that is the actual thing that happens. How many secrets we got in the outside anyways? Shit, I don't even answer that. I was gonna check way to answer something about Toyo, but the, 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 the. Toyo just gonna come out of there just like, hey, 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 man, what's going on, you know? Like there wasn't no big ass reveal last time we seen your ass. You know, I'm just out here, you know, just one of the guys. Anyways, for the rest of this episode with the main crew, Haru and Kiriko, this is the example, a prime example of there's two sides to every story. First of all, I was wrong as fuck last week, so yeah, Dr. Usami appears to not be the doctor that Kiriko was looking for, excuse me. No way, fuck, I was the only one. And, you know, we started off this episode with the riot continuing, but it was non-violent at the time until their leader got hit and fell on their head. Which is a very fatal move, depending on how well you keep yourself, your body strength, and your age. So her dying from that was surprising to me, but not after you heard it. You didn't think she would die from that, but she did, and it made perfect sense why it doesn't change back, it's unfortunate as hell. This inside the riot to just all of a sudden go violent. See, here's the thing. As we've seen in the last part of the episode, the guy that was second command, the bald dude, that took control after their leader died, kind of had their own intentions going. Not saying he wasn't loyal to the leader, not saying he wasn't down for the original cause, it was the fact that when time had changed, it was too easy for him to switch up. And even then, it didn't feel like he was acting out of anger. He said, oh, they fucked up now, now I got the chance to whoop my ass. It was that kind of thing. Well, things move really quick in the post apocalyptic world. You don't actually have time to grieve to be 100. It just felt, you know, just too easy for, for me. And of course, they eventually just took over because we were reminded now that all the people on the other side is amputees. Which brings us to that other side of the coin where... See, when we got the resistance side, it felt like they were just doing inhumane experience for the hell of it. Following up with that one guy that wanted to be protected because he had a piece of man eater with him that he wanted to use to inject people with to make immortal lives, we was kind of geared towards that conclusion that the side, this, the side Dr. Usami was on was on that bullshit. However, simply wasn't the case, huh? What we ended up doing was going down a very emotional roller coaster. Uh, first and foremost, Dr. Usami and Oh girl, I guess. I'm actually not mad how they played that one because they kind of played it, you know, they kind of eased into it. And even at the beginning, maybe they just knew each other. At the end, I won't just say they were straight up lovers. However, it was kind of not so necessarily dropping hints, but maybe it could have been kind of, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I just wasn't paying attention. I was quick to reference while watching this episode. However, you know, they started off as, hey, I knew this girl. Hey, she's my patient. Hey, you know, we used to be roommates. And then right before she died, she texted she loved him. And obviously, he loved her. That kind of thing. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, but the feelings was definitely there. Mutual. And the episode taking a turn where Kiriko and Maru see this perspective and doing the most so this girl can see this guy one last time as she wished. Very nice thing to do with full of emotion in that scene. And the soundtrack was just playing on that feel so hard, like, damn. Add in the sun setting. Like she wanted to see the sky, but you know, the, the day was slowly going by at the same time. This episode was new, but it was new, and it damn did do it. Now, the whole thing where, you know, Dr. Usami was down if he was even doing the right thing in the first place. Because his original reason, right, for even doing the amputee parts in the first place, taking parts of these people off because they was affected by man-eaters. Slowly turning into man-eaters themselves. Yeah, old boy was wrong by his prediction that is not immortality. This is man-eaters could be killed by Maru. The immortality day just got thrown out the window. And there's also the same thing about those people, all those patients wanted Dr. Usami to help them. Kind of as if, you know, they wanted this in the first place. That was really us, the flip side, honestly, because, like, we thought it was almost forced, inhumane, as in they shouldn't be doing this. It would be an axe to do this. Even when Dr. Usami was, was living with old girl, he mentioned the first person that walked up to him, walked in the house injured, asking for help. This inhumane New Order, I believe they were called New Order, I ain't gonna hold you guys up, I got sorry. That we said thought it was so strong for the resistance to try to take out was simply doing things upon a quest. A community of people that just needed help. Damn. Damn. Being that wrong does something to somebody, especially when you play a hand and the other side try to take these folks out. Which 
led us to a conflicted Maru this entire episode. Maru even asked himself for the fact that he killed those man eaters in that basement down there. Was that the reason all this happened? Was that the trigger pull for the resistance to do what they did in the first place? And while Maru was trying, well, Kiriko was trying to reassure Maru throughout the episode, I have to stand on that as well. Maru, what you did does not. Basically, other people would do what they would do, right? Maru is not the cause of what happened. Those is the resistance group is. Giving people the opening they needed to bullshit doesn't mean it's your fault that those people are bullshitting. There was man eaters down there, Maru took them out. That's what Maru does, as well as Kiriko. And. The fact that those people use that as an opportunity to do some more bullshit basically highlights the new leader of the resistance group right there and there. This guy seen the opportunity and did the most fucking way he could with it. It doesn't matter who or what that opportunity would have done, they would have made the worst out of it. So, nah, Maru, nah, not, like, none whatsoever. And of course, the ending scene, I was about to say nail the coffin, but fuck. Basically, Dr. Usami shoots himself in the head. Or to take himself out and not bow to he did. Once again, being in love with this woman and without her, without, you know, he was also conflicted this entire episode. You know, he did, doesn't know if what he was doing was the right thing, even though he had plenty of people telling him. See, that's another thing about it. Reassurance for other people doesn't always work, especially when that was your go to in the first place. The model only has Kiriko, and when he was conflicted with these feelings, Kiriko was able to console him, and that was really the first time he needed to. However, Dr. Usami. He has plenty of people asking him for help every day. He has plenty of things in his space that was supposed to remind him over and over again that what he's doing is the right thing. However, repetition also loses value over time or gets tired of it or just numbs. When his biggest reason for doing what he's doing is gone and the one thing that reassures him that he's doing the right thing no longer works. Once again, the inevitable conclusion. And no, I don't want to say suicide is the inevitable conclusion because no, that's simply not how it is. However, if it being a possibility, and hell, we've seen fucking Kyoto on court this week. Anime sometimes taking there. It's, that's, that's, just where we're, that's just where we're at. Upon seeing the scene, Maru once again just says his hands only destroy. And while those people are trying to save people, he only been killing man eaters, thinking that he could that's not save lives. Once again, Cap. First of all, my nigga, you can save Kyoto plenty of times. And second of all. Taking out these man eaters who kills everybody. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like episode two all over again, where this one woman believed that the man eater was her son, and the man eaters end up taking her out the second she turned her back. As far as the reason for these man eaters or where these man eaters are or came from, I'm gonna let the outside tell that. Yeah, I'm blaming y'all. However, these things cannot be reasoned with, cannot be controlled, cannot be contained, cannot be. Yeah. Killing somebody's trying to kill you. If a monster comes through and says fuck everybody, you, the person that takes them out is not the problem. Now this is like episode 8, so I believe this conference is going to rear its head again. I believe this show has 13 episodes, so we're not done with what we're doing right now. However, we do at least have a new lead. We know that Robin is still alive, and he's going by a new name, a doctor, him damn self. What's with doctors in this show? Giving Kiriko another reason to keep moving, but always still has to find heaven himself. So it's not like their story is derailed. This is a new side to Heavenly Delusion. Mostly everything that we typically see out of Heavy Delusion we didn't see in this episode, but at the same time, I mean, it simply wasn't a place for it. Almost like a straight up tone shift, and not only just for this episode, maybe going forward. No one just blatantly say it's time for the outside to do something, but shit. Maru and Kiriko needs a break, huh? Tokyo, your vacation's over. Hey, hey. You guys are feeling in the comment, know what you think. Like this video for me, and I'll see y'all. Heavy Delusion.